Hi guys, this is Mr. Davis here. Uh, this is the first of our remote learning lessons in PE. Uh, and this one is on technology in sport. Hopefully something uh, you guys will know a little bit about already and you should be able to use examples that you're aware of uh, to help you answer some of the questions that we've got coming up. So what I'd like you to do is go to a new page in your book, write down the title and underline it, write down the learning objective and the keywords. So that's technology in sport. And the learning objective is I will learn to evaluate the value of technology in sport. And the keywords are prosthetics, match analysis, and hyperbaric chambers. And I'll explain what those things are as we go through. Once you've done that, the first activity that I'd like you to do is write a list with a subheading of examples of any sporting examples you can think of where technology is used. Think about the different people involved in sport that use technology. I want you to make a list, uh, aim for at least eight different things if you can. Uh, pause the video here uh, and give yourself a few minutes uh, to make that list initially. Okay, you should have a few things written down now. What I'm going to do now is just give you a few hints and ideas of where you might be able to expand that list a little bit. As I mentioned before, if you think about the different people that use technology in sport, that should help you come up with a more comprehensive list. So when you're thinking about the different individuals involved in sport, you are hopefully thinking about some of the following. The actual performers or the athletes. Uh, what I would do is make a list of these individuals as you go through, because this will help you um, just shape the rest of the work. So the athletes and the performers. Coaches, so the people that work with the athletes and, and support them in their development. Sports scientists and analysts that help with uh, the highest level of elite sport. So looking for those, uh, those tiny little changes that can be made in their performance to actually uh, make a difference at the very top level of sport. Huge amount of technology involved in that. Officials, so in various different capacities in different sports, whether it's referees, uh, umpires, um, and then uh, more recently, uh, fourth officials and, and video assistants and people like that that are involved in making sort of uh, key decisions in matches. Obviously, a lot of technology involved in that. Spectators, so possibly one that you haven't thought of already, but if you think about it, there's a huge amount of technology that's involved in um, supporting and enhancing uh, the experience of spectators in sport, both live at the games, but also for people uh, at, at home as well. So uh, spectators is a key group that we need to think about. And finally, sponsors. So businesses and sponsors that are involved in sport, uh, massive amount of technology there to try and promote their image and their brand. Uh, and it's very much closely linked into the sport and the athletes and the stadiums and the facilities that are used, uh, massive, massive um, influence of technology there. So just to uh, confirm, we've got athletes and performers, we've got coaches and trainers, we've got scientists and analysts, we've got officials, we've got spectators, and we've got sponsors. And each of those is, uh, is heavily linked into technology and sports. So make sure you've got that listed down. And then once you've done that, can you add any more examples to your list? So if you go through each of those uh, groups of individuals, how do they each use technology in sport? Again, give yourself a few minutes to try and think a little bit outside the box. Think of some different examples from different sports. And see what other things you can add into your list. Again, just pause the video and see what you can add into your overall list uh, and maybe just make a note of whether they uh, the different types of technology you're thinking of which groups they they specifically apply to some things might apply to more than one group but um others are, are very much specific so yeah pause the video and um and we'll continue in a few minutes okay what we're going to do now is just try and clarify some of the examples that you should already have, and you may already have have, um, have these downs, but any that you don't have noted down, 
can you add them into your list and make sure that you've got as, as a bigger and comprehensive list as possible? Okay, so for these ones, these are largely linked into the actual performer or the athlete that is, that's involved. So I'll just go through each one individually and then I'll set you the little task of kind of thinking about how each of these benefits the performer or the athlete and what the potential negatives might be of, um, of the technology. So to begin with, things like football boots, the, the, the most modern day technology that's involved in those sorts of um, that sort of technology to enhance performance. Uh, and it, it's not just football boots, it could be running shoes, um, you know, uh, shoes, shoes for uh, sprinting on a track or even long distance running like uh, Kipchoge in the bottom picture there, uh, an incredible amount of technology involved in those shoes. Uh, think about the makeup of them. Think about how those kind of uh, shoes might benefit performance. You've also got other types of uh, equipment and technology for things like tennis rackets, uh, cricket bats, stuff like that. Uh, think about how uh, advances in technology might have helped um, benefit performance there. Often it's to do with the weight of the equipment, but also to do with the uh, the accuracy and the power that those sorts of uh, pieces of equipment give you. So, you know, tennis rackets have come along a huge way. They used to be uh, made out of wood um, with very, very kind of tough, rigid strings that didn't offer a lot of precision. And now, um, you know, it's feather-like um, in their weight and offering incredible amounts of power, but also accuracy. You've got things like heart rate monitors, Fitbits and, and things like that, that every, every day um, millions of people, not just elite athletes, can use those sorts of things uh, to monitor their performance, to set new goals for themselves, um, to, to track to their progress towards targets, um, a, a huge amount of technology uh, that's involved in that. Um, you've got things like uh, what they call the Peloton bike that it is quite expensive, but um, lots of people are starting to use them at home where you can kind of tune into fitness sessions um, and complete rides and, um, uh, and challenges uh, all over the world, but essentially from the comfort of your, of your own home. So if you want to get involved in the Tour de France, you know, you can sink into that um, and you have a personal trainer that helps you along again, to, to improve your performance. And then the final one on here are things that um, disability athletes might use. So what they call prosthetics, that word that was on the, on the keywords before. So essentially um, replacement limbs. In this example, it's, it's of a lower limb uh, and the advancement there, a huge amount of, of technology involved in that uh, to make sure that athletes uh, are able to use that sort of technology to enhance their performance for speed, uh, for power, uh, for control, but also for comfort. Because um, otherwise, you know, they wouldn't be doing it at all. So lots of different things there. What you need to think about are what are the specific benefits of each of those examples? And you might have others as well. And if you, if you have, then the same thing applies. Think about what are the benefits? What are the potential negatives? And we'll go through some of those in a minute, um, but just spend a few minutes now. So, for instance, if you're talking about tennis rackets, the benefits of modern technology in tennis rackets are the negatives of modern technology tennis rackets are. You can try and think about it like that for each one of those things, benefits and negatives. Pause the video now. Just try and complete that for each of those examples. We're now looking at different types of technology here for this is more to do with an, uh, the analysis of performance and you've got different types of programs and compute software. Uh, some that um, you know everyday people can use so programs like um, Strava and the Nike running apps that people can have on their phones and that are linked into watches um, or little gadgets that you can put into your shoes to track the distance that you're running the speed that you're running. Um, the intensity of your runs. There's so much technology that's involved in that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so that's crucial. Um, at a more elite level, you've got programs such as Dartfish, which you can see in the top right-hand corner, which is a very advanced analysis software uh, where your performance or your training is recorded. 
you can slow it down, you can play it back, you can compare it to other performers, including like elite performers. Um, you can have a look at like the trajectory of your movement, the speed. Um, there is an incredible amount of um, analysis that you can do there. You can kind of see on the bottom right where two athletes are compared and you can see how the lady on the left-hand side of the picture, her um, her leading leg, her toes pointing slightly more down and the guy on the other side, his toes pointing slightly outwards now. You know, at that level, it might not make a huge difference, but at a more advanced elite level, it's those sorts of things that if coaches can pick up on that, it's going to make a, a massive difference to performance. Um, you've also got the sort of technology that coaches would use for uh, team games, um, massively beneficial to um, coaches in terms of tracking the movements, um, the sprints, the distances covered by players, the shape of the formation, um, the, the tracking of other of other runners. It's all massively, massively beneficial, and they would use that through training and also um, in terms of uh, their actual competitive matches. The one potential downside uh, of some of that, not only is it incredibly expensive, but it's also something then that other teams and other coaches might be able to use. So um, it, it has a potential downside that, you know, some of the secrets and some of the um, te techniques and tactics that teams might be able to use can then be um, looked at and analysed by other teams uh, and potentially they can gain advantage of it. Uh, that's not to say that, uh, you know, your team wouldn't use it for that reason, but it is a potential downside. Uh, and for most of these things, uh, the cost of them is uh, is definitely the most prohibitive factor. So again, for each of these, could you just note down what the examples are, what the specific benefits might be to people using them, and also some of the potential negatives. Pause the video and just spend a few minutes doing that. Next set of technology in sport, and this is very much to do with recovery and rehabilitation. Uh, one of the uh, key words at the start was is, was a hyperbaric chamber, which is what you see on the top left-hand side there. It looks like a sort of space capsule, but essentially um, it's a, uh, a tanker that's filled with oxygen and it, it's uh, massively beneficial to rehabilitation uh, and recovery because your muscles are obviously keen um, for as much oxygen as possible to aid recovery. And if you've got a tank or a chamber like that that's full of oxygen, uh, that's going to enhance recovery. Uh, a similar thing is, a, is an oxygen tent, which is what the guy in, on the left-hand side is. Um, there's loads of other different types, types of things. You can have um, special settings in rooms or chambers where uh, the heat uh, and the humidity are adjusted so players and performers can uh, adapt to maybe playing in different environments. Um, you've also got things like um, rehab pools, where very um, kind of low level of intensity, but you can build up muscular endurance and rehabilitation through um, like running in a swimming pool. So it's less um, heavy impact on your joints. If you've had a, a bad injury, for instance, an impact injury in football, um, you can use that sort of process to um, start to gain muscular endurance and improve your fitness without the kind of heavy impact thudding of your muscles and your joints uh, hitting the heavy ground, uh, massively, massively uh, beneficial. But obviously with all of these things, they come at a cost. Um, so for each of them, can you note down the benefits and then the specific negatives that might be associated with these? Pause the video and just complete that for me. And the next one is to do with, uh, again, a little bit more to do with officials and an analysis of decisions that are made in games. So you guys will be very familiar with things like VAR and goal line technology that's used in sport. Massively beneficial, although uh, it does cause a huge amount of controversy these days, even though that's essentially what it was designed to eliminate because now decisions are getting looked at with such scrutiny. Uh, officials um are being judged at such a high level whether they get it right or whether they get it wrong or whether the var decision is accurate um it puts a huge amount of pressure on officials and to a certain extent it also takes away the enjoyment of the game 
uh, where spectators are often found just sitting, waiting five minutes. They've got no idea what's going on. It takes away the, the feeling and the fluidity of a game because um, you lose the atmosphere and you lose that feeling of excitement in the game when it's just gone to a computer to make a decision. Um, not exactly what it was designed for, even though uh, it is improving. Again, a huge cost involved in that, uh, but it does take away spectator experience. Similarly, with the one at the bottom left, um, test match officials so used in rugby, it's for some reason a much um, more streamlined process and one that they actually use far better than in football, partly because they've been doing it a lot longer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still, it's still something that slows down the game a little bit. Potentially, it can add an element of excitement because um, when it goes there, there's a kind of build up of tension and excitement. You get to suddenly see whether the test match official or the, um, the VAR official has, um, has given the goal or given the points in your favour. Um, it's not quite there in football yet, but in rugby, it's, it's quite a key feature that adds, adds to the game. So it's not all negative. You've also got things like um, Hawkeye, which you can see on the bottom left and um, sorry, the bottom right and top right. It's used specifically in sports like tennis and cricket with cameras all around the court or the pitch. And it can uh, essentially it tracks the ball and it can uh, eliminate errors from officials. It tells you whether the ball's in or out. It tells you whether a player would be in or out in cricket and whether the ball was going to hit the stumps. Um, there's a lot of videos that I've got coming up um, that I'm going to leave you to, to look through. But if you're not sure about any of these sporting examples, then you can uh, look at the videos just to clarify what each one of these are. Uh, but again, if you just note them down, what are the benefits and what are the potential negatives of each of them? Okay. Moving through this, these are some of the, uh, the kind of the key things that you can comment on. I've obviously just done it in note form, but what you can do now is just go back through your examples and your kind of evaluation of benefits and, uh, and negatives. And you can see for each of these, whether there are things here on the left hand side that are like uh, the more positive elements and on the right hand side, some of the potential negatives. And if you've not been able to come up with a a decent list of at the very least two or three benefits and negatives for each one, then you can use these as a kind of hint to add to the uh, information that you've got already. So this is it for performers. And again, if you need to pause the video and just go through this and make sure that you've got um, a good amount of information for this. Same thing applies to sport. Now sport overall can include any element to do with performance, to do with officiating, to do with spectators and to do with um, sponsorship. So this is more of an, uh, uh, an overall thing. So if you get asked the question about how technology influences sport, you can comment on any of those things. Um, so it's just useful making a few notes about what the benefits and what the negatives are for sport as a whole. You've got the same thing for officials positives and negatives. Again, pause it here if you need to. Make sure you've got a clear set of notes um, that are specifically linked to officials. And then sponsors. So some of the benefits on the left, some of the negatives on the right. Read them through, add any key things to your notes so you've got comprehensive notes for each. Again, pause the video if you need to. And this is where the set of videos start. I'm not expecting you to look through every single one, but specifically ones that um, maybe you are less familiar with. It's definitely worth flicking on at least one video for each of these um, pages that comes up now. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but it does help give you a, a good overview um, of what the technology is. And if you need to, you can add some notes into what you've got down just to um, develop your understanding of what's involved in that piece of technology. So this is it for training. You've got the same thing for timing. So timing in terms of like races uh, and competitive distance runs uh, or cycling or rowing, uh, anything like that. This one's to do with sports performance analysis. So when you're looking at how well or how efficiently someone is performing, this video just goes into a bit of detail on that. 
And these ones are, are specifically to do with examples from sport that are linked to officiating. So VAR. So this is just a video that explains how it works. If you're not familiar with VAR, it's quite an interesting video if you like football. Uh, these are ones to do with Hawkeye. So the examples I was speaking about to do with tennis and cricket. Uh, again, worth just clicking on at least one of these for each of these sports to get an idea of what's involved. This one's to do with prosthetics. So the, um, uh, the kind of the technology that helps disabled athletes, whether it's um, upper body limbs, uh, lower body limbs um, that have, um, have been affected and athletes are now able to use this sort of technology to enhance performance. Hypoxic tents, which is essentially an oxygen tent, which I mentioned before, it's all to do with recovery and rehabilitation. And then this is the main task that I want you to complete and send me evidence of. So I'll just read it through for you. Can you please explain the advantages and disadvantages of technology in sport for each of the following. So performers, stroke athletes, officials, spectators, and sponsors. What I'd like you to do is write out either typed or you can handwrite it at least one paragraph per group. It should amount to at the very least one full page of work outlining different examples of technology, the benefits of their use and some of the potential negatives. So I want specific examples for each of those groups, how that technology is used, what the intended benefits are of its use, but what are also the potential downsides or negatives um, of their use. Often that's to do with cost, but there are other things that you can comment on there. Um, that is the task that I'm setting you for this week. Um, like I say, you can email it to me typed up or you can take a, a photo of your neatly written hand uh, handwritten work uh, and you can submit that to me again through email. Uh, if you are unsure of anything here, please don't just ignore the instructions and fail to do the work. Can you have a go at it? Can you um, be proactive in asking other people in the group what they've done, not to copy them, but just to try and support each other and help each other out with it? And then as a, as a um, kind of last case resort, but one that I'm happy to offer support with, email me and I will give you some further guidance as it is um, what you need to be doing. OK, good luck with it. Um, any issues, let me know and uh, all the best. And there'll be some more work shared for you on Monday.